Hello. I thought I'd do this video. It's something that, um, as a liberal, libertarian, modern day liberals aren't the same. I guess you'd call me a libertarian. But as a libertarian and an American and someone who loves the Constitution, there's some things that, you know, they're just always like, you know, how, why. And we have a law here in the United States that, like most of our laws over the past 40 years or so, are sold with good intentions. Though there are no good intentions ever meant in reality, they're just sold with the good intentions. And both parties are responsible for this. This isn't a Republican or Democrat issue. This is a American politician issue because both the parties work together to put on this big dog and pony show so that, you know, and then um, every, everybody from one bar party blames the other party. Meanwhile, you know, they're just working together to do these things. But I thought I'd make a video telling you about, because of this law, things that are illegal to do in the United States including even if you're not an American. So if you come from England, Turkey, Russia, France, Australia, these are things that are illegal to do in the United States. In the United States, it is illegal to be a tourist if you don't have a credit card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you heard me right. It is illegal in the United States to be a tourist if you don't have a credit card. If you come to the United States from another country, when you look it up, it says you're allowed to travel with up to $10,000 cash. So, you come to the United States, you know, you're someone that, you know, You've worked hard for the past five years, you saved up $7,500, you're coming to the United States, you're going to take a road trip here in the United States, you get to the airport in Miami, you get a rental car, you're going to drive across the country and get an airplane back from LAX to wherever you're from. Perfectly reasonable. I, I can totally see why someone would do this. I would do it. I live here. I live in Florida. I would, I'm looking forward to the day when I can finally get in my car, not in this truck, but in my car and actually get on the back roads of the United States and see the country. The problem is, just like for you, for me, it is also illegal for me to travel with cash. Even though there's no law against me traveling with cash, and because I'm an American citizen on American soil, there's not even a cap to how much cash I can travel with. But if you or I get pulled over anywhere, any state, you get pulled over, the police can just take your money. If you're a foreigner, can you imagine the devastation? Not to mention the fact that all your money was just stolen. Now you're going to have legal problems because you came here as a foreigner on a schedule and you're only allowed to stay here for so long on your passport and now you have no money. You can't go any further than what you've got except for a couple hundred miles with your rental car and you can't afford to put gas in your rental car. For a foreigner, this is even worse than it is for me as an American. But they're just allowed to take your money. They just take it. So what other things does this cause, aside from if you're a tourist or a vacationer? What other things aren't you allowed to do in the United States that would warrant traveling with money? Well, you can't buy a business. You can't save up your hard-earned money and buy a business with cash in the United States. There's no law against buying a business with cash in the United States. But, let's say you live in Georgia and 
you want to buy a business up here and up in Ohio or Michigan let's say Michigan Michigan's a good one so you're driving down the interstate in Michigan and you get pulled over cop asked you got any weapons in the car no got any drugs in the car no you got any cash in the car yeah, I'm on my way up here. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling up here because I just told you. I'm buying a business. That's why I'm up here. That's why I'm traveling up here. Oh, let me see the cash. You show them the cash. They take the cash. They write your receipt, and then they drive away with your money. Let's say, you know, you're going to spend $60,000 on this business. Now, it's not unreasonable because you're paying cash. So you're getting the business for $60,000 instead of maybe seventy or $75,000 because you're paying the guy cash so he doesn't have to jump through all the hoops and hurdles dealing with banks and this and that. The money's going to be right there. He can do what he wants right then and there. So to him, you know, ten dollars to $15,000. Hey, that's well worth it. I don't have to wait for the money. So you get a great deal of buying cash. Totally legal. Nothing illegal about this. But they take your money. Now you've lost the business. You lost $60,000. And they make it nearly impossible for you to get your money back, too. That's the other thing. They make it nearly impossible to get your money back. Let's say I'm a car guy. Whenever you listen to anybody, when it comes to consumer protection, anybody who's a commentator on this, you know, like like how um, Clark Howard, when you listen to these people, they all tell you the same thing. Do not send these people a check. And if you're the one selling the car, do not accept a check. Even a traveler's check. Because all these things can be forged, and if you send them the money ahead of time with the check, your money can be stolen. So you never transact for a sale of a car with a check or a money order. You do it only in cash. Everybody out there in the consumer protection world tells people this. When it comes to a used car, you only make the transaction in cash. It's the safest way to make the transaction. So, like me, I live in Florida. I'm driving to Alabama. I found my 69 F85 442 convertible holiday coupe. You know, really all kinds of things about the car that make it really, really unique. So I'm going out there, $30,000 cash in my, in my, on my person. You know, because they want thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars for the car, but I told them I'll come out there with cash. If I come out with cash and I like the car and everything's right, will they take thirty thousand dollars? And they say, yeah, we negotiate this over the phone ahead of time. So I let them know I'll be there with cash. You know, if everything works out, yeah, totally legal. Nothing at all illegal about this. Two things can happen when this happens. I could go out there, and on my way out there, the police, I could pull over for something stupid. Maybe, you know, I'm driving through the night, hit a bump, bump jars the car, winds up, you know, rattling a um, taillight bulb loose. So I get pulled over for a taillight. You know, they ask about cash, I tell them the truth, yeah, I got cash, and they just take my money. That's one thing that can happen. What else they can do is I can go out there, buy the car, and on my way back, they could just take my car. They could actually take the car that I just bought, and they could even take the car that I'm driving, towing the other one with. Whether I'm towing it with a tow bar, which is legal, a qualified tow bar is legal, or if it's on a trailer. You know, different ways you can tow a car. They can take it all from you. 
totally legally. Although I didn't break any law, not being charged any crime at any time. In any of these examples, are you being charged with a crime? Not at all. They can just take it from you. It's a law here in the United States called civil forfeit, civil asset forf forfeiture. When this law was originally passed, it was passed to fight the war on drugs. Which, you know, when you think about that, you're like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I can see that. Somebody gets caught with a car full of drugs and they have all this cash in their car. Yeah, that makes sense. But where they cross the line is you don't have to be charged with a crime. You don't have to be charged with a crime. And to get your money back, they throw the United States Constitution out the window. Because when you commit a crime, you have to be found guilty of the crime. When they just take your money or your property, you don't have to be found guilty of any crime. They can just take it. So, it makes one wonder. And states aren't, most states aren't doing anything to stop this. And you think they would. Because, think about it. I'm not sure if, if um, Florida is a civil forfeit a civil asset forfeiture state or not. I gotta look into that. But Florida is a big tourist state. If tourists found out that it's illegal to come to the state with cash, don't you think that would hurt tourism? Most states have a tourism economy. I mean, there are things in pretty much every state that have a attraction for tourists. So you think every state would be doing everything they could to protect that income for their state. Well, they don't care because it's been a secret for so long. Most people don't know this. And when you tell most people about it, they think it's crazy until, you know, they go and they start looking and then they realize, wow, this is real. This happens. This really happens. And this happens to people all the time. Business owners, I mean, there was a guy on his way to Mississippi, I believe, to buy a business. They took his cash. So he not only lost the business he was going to buy, but he lost the business that he owned. And he lost his house, I believe. So he lost everything because they stole his money and refused to give it back to him. The government. The police. Yeah, yeah, the police. I mean, you know, granted they're doing what the government tells them to do, so, you know... But sometimes, you know, you have to look at things and say, yeah, but that's not completely justifiable. If that was completely justifiable, we wouldn't have went after Germans for war crimes because their government told them to do those things. So you can't always justify it. But, I mean, you have to... I do cut them some slack. I, cut, I tend to cut some cops slack because they are being forced to do things, being told to do it by the government. But there does come a time where you have to say, you know, you know you're crossing a line here. And there are plenty of people all over this country that have lost everything they've owned because of things like this. And it's not just people with large amounts of money. In a lot of states, they don't go after people with money. Because if they go after the people with money, they know those people can afford a lawyer and they can ruin it for the state. Because a lot of states, they actually work this into their budget. This is how they pay their budget. They go out stealing money from people to pay for their budget. You call it whatever you want. It's stealing. At the end of the day, if I went up to somebody and said, no, nah, you can't have that. Here's a receipt. I'm taking it. That's stealing.
But um, yeah, you would think more states would be on board with stopping this. And I think that's the way, because there's a lot of people fighting this, and I think that's the way that, you know, we need to start getting the word out there. I think we need to start people that are against this and see the illegitimacy of this and see how wrong this is and understand how this is working and what it's doing. The best way to go about this is to start going on boards that are um, promoting tourism for states. And you just need to let people know you're not allowed to come to the state with cash. If you come to the state with cash, it's going to be taken from you. And like I said, it's not just people in, in general, they tend to avoid people. Like if you're driving a brand new BMW or brand new Mercedes, they're less likely to take the cash from you than if you're driving a 93 Civic. If you're not driving a 93 Civic with $1,000 in cash on you, they're more likely to take that $1,000 from you than they are the guy driving the brand new Mercedes or BMW traveling with $30,000 in cash. Because they're aware of the fact that the guy's driving a brand new BMW or a Mercedes. He could probably afford a lawyer. So they don't want to take the cash from him. But the guy driving the beat up car with $1,000 in his pocket, they want to take that money. Because that person is obviously someone that can't afford a lawyer on, a, on, on its face and fight them. And if you're in a rental car, that's another one. If you're renting a car, it doesn't matter that it's a brand new car, it's a rental car. So odds are in their favor that you can't afford a lawyer to fight them. And since tourists are the ones that are more likely to use a rental car than anyone else, whether you're living in the, whether you're an American going somewhere else traveling as a tourist in the United States, or you're from a foreign country coming here traveling in America as a tourist, you're highly highly likely to be using a rental car. So you can't travel with cash on you. They'll steal it. And so if you're someone that you can't get a good credit card or a credit card with with a good interest rate so you don't have a credit card, you're not allowed to travel in the United States. You're not allowed to be an American and exploring this great country of ours, and you're not allowed to be a foreigner exploring this great country of ours because you're not allowed to travel with cash. Even though there's nothing illegal about it, there's no law against it, you're not allowed to do it. So, if you know somebody that's coming to America to visit, or you know somebody that's planning on going on vacation, and they're planning on traveling, and there's someone who's planning on traveling with cash because they don't have a credit card, maybe they don't even have a debit card per se, and don't travel with prepaid cards. If you travel with prepaid cards, they can steal the money off those too very easily. It's hard for them to steal the money out of your bank account on a debit card. But if you have a prepaid debit card, they can they can seize that just as easily as they can seize the cash. So, like I said, if you're planning on coming to the United States as a tourist, you need to be aware of this. If you have a friend planning on coming to the United States as a tourist, you need to let them be aware of this. If you're an American just planning on traveling the country, you need to be aware of this. If you're an American planning on driving three or four states across to buy that car the way that every consumer protection show tells you to buy that car, which is with cash, which makes sense. There's a reason why. It's for your protection. No, you're not allowed to buy that car. You're not allowed to drive all across state lines to buy that car. You might get pulled over in your state, you might get pulled over in another state, and there's a high probability that they're just going to take your money. So you can't go buy the car. And you don't want to take checks because, as I said, every consumer protection show out there tells you not to deal, they tell the seller not to deal with checks, and they tell the buyer not to deal with checks. 
They tell the buyer not to send the money ahead of time. They tell the buyer not to give them any kind of access to your bank account. I mean, there's all these things. So they tell you the safest way to buy a car or the safest way to sell a car is you make the transaction in cash. But in the United States, if you get pulled over on your way to make that transaction, your money is very likely to be stolen from you. Just something people need to be aware of. Like I said, you can look into this. Don't even just go on YouTube. Go online and look up the federal law. It's a federal law. They're just allowed to take your money. It's not a joke. And almost every state still allows it. I think there's a... It's only a handful of states. It's only a couple states. But there are a couple states that have finally put it in their constitution that civil asset forfeiture is illegal under their constitution. So... But those are the only states where you're safe traveling with cash.